Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. If you're new to my channel, I have an allotment in Oxfordshire and uh, I grow lots of vegetables. <laughs> but this year I'm also gonna venture into flowers, okay? I have grown flowers in the past, but not really, not really gone for it, if I say it that way. I, I've, I've grown the ones I've had for free, either through friends or in magazines, you know. Um, and I've got some dahlias, the tubers that I got from my mom, and so on and so on. So I haven't really grown things that I've picked out. I've just grown whatever I had, basically. And mainly to, uh, to encourage pollinators to come into my plot. I'm quite lucky I've got, um, it's very much uh, a countryside allotment site so we do get a lot of wildlife anyway but to encourage the pollinators actually onto my plot I do like to grow uh, flowers as well amongst the vegetables. I've also got a more of a wild, wild area that I just threw loads of flower seeds basically everything I had uh, onto. It was just a mound of topsoil from our garden. And I did that in, I think, July. And I was surprised of how much came up, including like giant sunflowers and all sorts of stuff. So they was flowering, looking absolutely amazing far into October, November. So I wanna encourage that again. I wanna expand on that. And I'm gonna have a bit more of a concentrated effort or concerted effort into growing more flowers. So I thought I'd do a little video about what types I'm gonna grow and this specific video is just about the things I need to sow now in February, March. Uh, so if you're looking at growing the same ones then this is a good video for you just to get uh, an idea of what you need to get in now rather than wait later. So I have another pile. I went through them at the weekend and I have three piles. I have the pile for February, March, and I have the pile for April and beyond. And then I have another pile which is direct sown. So that includes all my poppies, like loads and loads of poppies. So I find poppies are really easy to grow just by spreading them out um, willy-nilly rather than growing them in, in modules. And that's because they don't like their roots disturbed. And if you really need to, you can just move them from where you sowed them, I think. It does work, uh, but I just found it was a nicer effect from the ones I just spread, spread out rather than station planted, basically. So, yeah, so the poppies are in the direct zone plant. But anyway, today's pile um, has quite a lot and I haven't gone through and sorted them. Um, so we'll just whisk through them as quickly as possible. So what I have here is hellebores. So hellebores obviously have been, this is a really old pack of seeds. Uh, this is a ushba, it's a pure white, large flat flowers. And I bought these seeds originally years ago because I wanted them in the garden and I just never got around to sowing them. So these obviously won't flower until earliest next winter but it's a good time to get them going now because it, it, it does take a, a, a while and I've never grown I've always bought hellebores as a clump so I think it might take some time to get them to that big size that you would buy them in the garden center and there's a reason why they're so expensive when you buy them in the garden center so it's probably the time so the sooner the better basically and I've got these cupcake uh, Cosmos mix colors and they were just so gorgeous on my neighbor's plot last year so I want to get them going and I have these violas freckles it's called oh can you uh, focus can you focus can you see that um, <laughs> yeah they're, they're basically uh, oh yeah maybe that one is easier so they're white with purple speckles on I love violas and uh, this one is not an F1 variety so I'm hoping it will just spread about. And then I have lobelia, so I love trailing lobelia and I, I really love this blue colour, like it's um, it's so blue it's painful really. And I always buy the bedding plants, so I thought this year I'll just try growing them from seed. And um, they're just for growing in the baskets that I have. Uh, 
in the garden or uh, I'm gonna set them up like plant up the pots that have had their spring bulbs in them they can probably have lobelia in them when they're finished and um, then I have aqualegias so this is a mix how gorgeous is that so I've bought a few very fanciful mixes right so this one does also take a long time I think so yeah it, it could take one to three months to germinate right one to three months that's that's quite a long time <laughs> but I want to grow them so I've got um, linseed or flax so I had some of them in a random uh, flower mix wild wild uh, pollinator flower mix right so I had a few of them flower in my wild area and they were so beautiful and you can use them the seeds later on in cooking and whatnot so I thought I'd give them another go and just bought a specific packet then I got snapdragons this is a love something I fell in love with last year so this is another mixed color and they were so gorgeous together just the the colors uh, I'll insert some footage which is just so gorgeous and I have some uh, Rebecca so these were uh, <laughs> sent to me from my friend who does not like orange flowers I don't mind them on the allotment and uh, these are perfect for, for pollinators, they love Rebecca, so that's a good one. I've got more Cosmos, this is a to very tall variety that I grew last year, and they did the best where I just threw them out. The ones I raised as in pots uh, didn't do so well, but I will do that as well as spreading some out direct. And then I've got some um, Erythinium maize, and this is a free seed packet that I never got around to sowing. And these are just great for pollinators, well worth a grow. Black eyed Susans, uh, so I got a lot of climbing spaces and they did really well actually last year and they were just beautiful uh, growing in amongst my um, my tomatoes and my cucumelons and I want to do that again this year. And forget-me-nots, I've already sowed in autumn and they are currently in the greenhouse. But I'm gonna sow a few more now, and because I just want to have the the place surrounding my little green area on on the allotment, I want to have them covered in forget-me-nots come spring. And then I have this, which is a type of marigold. It's a Mexican marigold, and this one, Tagetus minuta, is huge plant, 1.8 meters. <laughs> Uh, but why you grow it and why it doesn't have flowers on it is because it deters bindweed right so I thought yeah, this would be a great one on my bindweed ridden plot sorry my nose is running <laughs> so yeah I'm excited about that one all right and I have another a lot of mixed cosmos I don't know what size these are so that'll be a bit of a surprise and clary sage another one i love absolutely love and this is a, a a color mix as well so i find it for the plot i don't mind what colors the flowers are i just want to grow them all so yeah i'm excited this one will be great and then i bought a packet of oxide daisies because they're so beautiful i probably could have just dug up a clump somewhere around here right but it just didn't feel right doing that so I'm gonna grow them and these are probably specifically for the wild area and hopefully they'll just naturalize there and um, yeah I'll grow them as well around with the forget-me-nots so that when the forget-me-nots are finished these will come in and they'll really signal summer to me like these always do. So I already sowed quite a lot, but sowed all of these sweet peas already in October but I'm gonna sow some again in spring specifically the ones that didn't do so well so the turquoise lagoon I had some germinate, but not far far from all of them, so I want to sow some more. And then there's the wild Italian, which is a home saved seed, and they're so vigorous. They're a great, uh, great one. And these are um, just a color mix, and you know, just pastels and pinks, just beautiful. Uh, so was it this one, almost black? It was either almost black or. Black Knight that didn't do so well, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna grow both of these again now in spring and then high scent, all beautiful. I think these kind of colors are maybe more for the garden, but if you know, I'm gonna have too many RNA for the garden, so they're probably gonna end up on the allotment as well. 
but yeah that's all the seeds so all these seeds taken together with all the vegetables I'm gonna sow now in February March yeah I'm gonna maybe need to invest in some more uh, staging for the greenhouse <laughs> Yeah, I'm quickly gonna run out of space, I think. I don't know what I would have done if I wasn't gonna get a second greenhouse. And for me, it's really important now to read the package instructions and to maybe have a quick Google just to see how to best germinate these seeds. Some of them require light to germinate, some require stratification in the fridge. Uh, so there's all sorts of stuff going on, right? I actually forgot now, I have a few seed packets inside the house I'm gonna try to sow today. Part of one of them being the Himalayan poppy and that one is tricky right it's tricky so I'm gonna have a go this year and we'll see how we get on I'm hoping at least the cottage kind of type flowers will do really well but yeah if you've been watching this far thank you very much I'm glad to have you and uh, give me a follow it really helps it really really helps and it makes me really happy every time I get a new follower new subscriber sorry new subscriber if you want to see more of me and what I was growing last year, head over to my Instagram, it's always a good shout. Um, get to do a lot of throw throwbacks nowadays because it's so cold and so miserable. So on my YouTube channel I'm doing a project this year called The Allotment Year. I basically release a new vlog every Friday morning just to chronicle what I get up to and what's on my to-do list for that week that in during the year so a it will be great to look back upon for me but I also hope that inspires you to get out on the plot and do something every week and the whole allotment project or the allotment garden will be much easier to handle and keep on top of and that's really really what we need and for me I feel so much better once I've been out here and doing some jobs. It doesn't really matter what it is, even if it's just weeding, it's just great and um, it makes me feel so good. So, so I'll see you on Friday, hopefully, for the next vlog.